So I've been thinking about filming this for quite some time. Most people that know me are aware of my situation and my condition. And I've been in papers before, I've been on Lorraine Kelly, I've been on local news. Um, but as I've got older, I've found it a little bit harder to speak about. So I'm gonna speak about it now because it's getting more and more common. And I think it's, you know, good to share and make people aware of conditions that are out there. So basically, I have gone through the menopause early. This has been called premature ovarian failure, premature ovarian inf insufficiency, and primary ovarian insufficiency. So there's a million and one names. Um, I just call it premature ovarian, ovarian failure because that's what it was called when I got diagnosed. So basically, um, my story is I started my periods when I was 10. I was pretty much the height I am by this, like by that age now. So I'm just over five foot seven. So I already had boobs, I started my periods and then they stopped. But you're told all the way through school that your periods will be a regular. Um, so initially I didn't think much of it. And then a very weird thing for a 10, 11 year old to think is I can't have children. It was a very, very strong feeling that got stronger and stronger and stronger, but I kept pushing it to the back of my mind and didn't really speak to anyone about it. Um, before this time, I was the most confident, outgoing child you could ever meet. Very, very, very confident. And I just started to kind of, I don't know, become a little bit insecure. So then I started secondary school when I was 11 and my weight literally went from a size 8 to 18 in just a matter of months and my mood was up and down and this carried on for a little bit and then my mum kept finding me upset so she decided it was time to go get some medical advice because she could tell that I was getting downer and downer and downer about it but at this point I hadn't actually mentioned my periods because again I don't know why. I don't know why. It wasn't that I didn't feel like I could talk to anyone about it. I think it's just something I potentially suppressed. So we went to the doctors and the doctors said, some people just put on weight, so you're going to have to feed her boiled chicken and boiled vegetables. Okay. My mum made a passing comment on the way out, and I always think that if she did not say this comment, I could be in a really bad situation because I've seen other stories of people with my condition that have just been, you know, dismissed basically and then they've ended up with more severe health conditions associated with this condition. She said, could it be her age? And the doctor said, have you started your periods? I told him what had happened, that I'd had six months worth and then I was sent for a series of blood tests and my hormone levels were crazy. Um, I then got referred to gynecology and they had a children's clinic once a month. Getting diagnosed was, was horrible and it's only, I actually think I'm actually dealing with this now. Um, I, I run dance and fitness sessions and I teach kids and I teach kids that are aged seven to, well onwards, I teach adults and and the ones that are between 10 and 13, it's starting to dawn on me, these sort of examinations I was having. So I basically was pretty much naked on a bed at one point, um, breasts being examined, um, being examined down there by a grown man and people in the room and student nurses and people kind of put in a face, kind of feeling sorry for me. And that was awful. I then had an internal ultrasound, which is anyone's ever had, is a... Uh, Interesting. I always, uh, I've just started to realise I've lost my virginity to a massive white camera thing, um, which was weird. And I remember at the time they, I could see the screen, and I could see my womb. And I remember thinking that's where a baby should be, but there's never going to be one there. And it's really weird that I still remember these feelings and these thoughts, um, which are quite weird for a child to have at that age. Um, and then we got the diagnosis. I was 13, it was the 11th of December, year 2000. And um, 
I think my mum was more shocked than me. I got upset, but I wasn't shocked. I kind of knew it was going to happen. Uh, and I was sort of just kind of left to it. I was put on HRT, hormone replacement therapy, um, and sent a load of leaflets with grey haired ladies on, which I remember receiving them and I was quite excited because I thought, you know, I'm going to get some advice and things like that. And it just was soul crushing. The HRT made me have monthly bleeds. Um, I then started having some side effects with that. I think it was more weight gain. So they kind of chopped and changed me between that and the pill. They sometimes gave me a break to see if everything would kick, start back up, but it never did. Um, I was put on the pill, which was really, really strong for me on and off over the years. I'd have side effects, migraines, weight gain, weight loss, um, mood, my teen years weren't the best i was my mental health was pretty shit as you'd expect it to be i didn't really get any additional help then until i went to uni and i changed doctors and they said have you ever had a laparoscopy i can never say that right so basically it's a camera that goes in through your belly and it looks at your ovaries so they arranged for me to have that and i had that done when i was 20. um they said that your ovaries should be four to five centimetres long and one centimetre thick and mine were half a centimetre and a centimetre long so mm, they were more interested in testing for their own research they tested me um for turner syndrome fragile x syndrome things like that um there's been no reason why it happened to me it can just be unexplained it can be genetic if you're someone in your family's had an early menopause um Sometimes it's caused by radiotherapy and chemotherapy because it just, it basically kills off the reproductive system because it doesn't need it. And then again, like myself, some is just unexplained. It's just gone. I fought really hard to get a Dexter bone scan. Nobody would give them to me. I remember ringing up age 23 and they said, we have no one to compare you to, so we're not going to do it. Um, which is ridiculous because they know the ranges they should be in. Um, <clears throat> I literally did, I've not had good treatment whatsoever from start to finish, even now when I'm 30 now. It's just shocking. It's a little bit more common now um, as well. It's not like it's something really unheard of. It's getting more and more press. It was on um, this morning, not so long ago as well. And um, actually the BBC are looking into doing a documentary about it and they recently interviewed me. And they were quite shocked how much I knew. But, I mean, from age 13, I've been on fertility forums and do my own research. So, um, I'm pretty clued up. I finally got my first bone scan um, in 2012. So, four years ago when I was 26. And my bone density was low. And they were starting to see signs of osteopenia, which is the start of osteoporosis. Um, I was gutted. Absolutely gutted because... I, I tried to look after myself. I think my conditions made me look after myself. So that's when I got into really looking after myself. I'd stopped the fad diet. I stopped because I know what it can do to you. As a fitness professional, I know what it can do to you. But sometimes you need something to kick you into thinking more smartly. So that's when I really got cautious about what I ate. And I tried to get good calcium and vitamin D from food and not supplements and things like that. And um, I had two more bone scans and they lost them. And I just thought, because I hadn't heard anything, they were, you know, better. And it literally wasn't until two weeks ago that um, they found them. And I had one this January and I've got my bone density back in a normal range. And it was just, I pretty much cried when I found out because this condition is fucking shit. There's so much, there's so much to do with it. It affects your mental health so much. I mean, from age 13, before I even got diagnosed, I was telling myself I'd done something wrong, that some thing somewhere just thought I was going to be a horrendous mother, a horrific mother. So they took it away from me. <clears throat> and that's how my thought pattern went. And I think that led to the problems in my teens and pretty much how I feel about myself now. Um, I've got pretty crap self-esteem. Um opinion of the way I look, <clears throat> things like that. Um, so that's sort of my story. Um, the latest sort of update is kind of, I've 
got to 30 and I'm thinking do I or do I not try for children I've definitely got no eggs um they said my follicle stimulated hormone that should be around zero to minus seven and my last result was 147 so completely out of the range that just basically means it's trying so hard to stimulate something but there's there's nothing there so some people do still have periods and do still have eggs um i don't mine are long gone um i'm trying to do this to actually be quite positive because you you can you can really attack the things you can control with this so you know mental health your the rest of your health so looking after yourself through nutrition and i'm actually going to do a video of what i've eaten and what i've done to improve my bone density and what i do to look after myself and um basically you know natural supplements to look after myself for, for if and when i do look at fertility treatment so we recently inquired um myself and my partner and because i've moved out of the town i'm in the wrong postcode so if we do want treatment, we are going to have to pay for it. So um, that's that's great. I understand NHS funding, but it's just a little bit testing um, because it's not cheap. We've done the math. It's going to be near the £10,000 mark for one go. And that's a lot of money. And the people make comments, well, if you can't afford treatment, you can't afford a child. I think that's a really insensitive thing to say because most people to get pregnant then have say that £10,000 to spend on their child. <laughs> I think it's really insensitive. And you know, we, we will be able to do it, um, have a loan or a credit card to do it, but we can manage it. But for a lot of people that is just just unheard of. That's They're not gonna be able to do that. It's, it's absolutely heartbreaking. Um, it is heartbreaking so there is a lot of shortage of egg donors in the country as well which is making waiting lists longer and longer so if we were going to get funded we would have been with a one of two clinics and one of the clinics their wait list is two years long and the other one is a year long however there's a wait list to get an initial consultation so you're probably looking at it's early september now um so we wouldn't be able to get an appointment till december january for a consultation so it's just um yeah not the best so we have decided we're going to go private it's only money but it's just something to be aware of if it's something you do want to go down if you are a sufferer of POI, POF, early menopause whatever you want to call it um I want to put myself out there as well because I'm guessing there's a lot of mums out there that possibly their teenage daughters have just been diagnosed with it I am more than happy for you guys to get in touch with me and I can try and spin a positive light on it. The other thing in regards to egg donation, so it's a hard one to get head around and a lot of people say to me, oh, but you've known your whole life, so that's great, you've accepted it. No, 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 I haven't. It really frustrates me every time someone says that, oh, you're lucky, you've known your whole life. I have no doubt if you try for a baby and you find out then, that is devastating. But finding out when you're young, before that's even in your mindset that you can't have a family is something completely different on a whole another spectrum. I don't think you can compare either of those scenarios. It's heartbreaking in its own way. And I grew up feeling quite pessimistic about the future. I had this sort of... I was thinking, oh, you know, I'm going to have to choose between a house, having a baby and getting married because I'm not going to be able to afford it all because I knew the cost of IVF when I was 13. Uh, that is generally my story. As I say, I know probably a little bit too much about the condition. Um, all I can say, all my advice is, is just don't let it define you because I did. And I'm trying not to now just you didn't do anything wrong it's just one of those things that happens unfortunately and that's that thank you very much for watching and i'll do another video soon